I now call for questions from the party leaders. Leader of the UKIP group, Neil Hamilton. Uh, it's clear now that the failure of the Prime Minister's cynical opportunist snap election gamble has uh, thrown the whole Brexit negotiating process into confusion, perhaps uh, exacerbated by the fact that she's appointed 16 Remainers to her cabinet of 23. And in particular, this throws perhaps more into question than previously uh, the nature of our border controls uh, post-Brexit. Um, I'm wondering where the Labour Party now stands in this process, uh, because I'm sure the First Minister will see that uh, both Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonnell have said that the Labour Party is formally committed to taking Britain out of the single market and the customs union, whereas Keir Starmer has said he wants to negotiate a new form of single market agreement, and Barry Gardner, the Shadow International Trade Secretary, has said that we criticised Mrs May for taking single market membership off the table right from the very beginning. So can the First Minister tell me whether he is now a Corbynite uh, or whether he's a Starmerite? Well, uh, what we do know uh, from the election is the hard Brexit that uh, is uh, espoused and promoted by, by UKIP is dead. Uh, people were asked to uh, vote on a particular version of Brexit, specifically asked to vote on that by Theresa May, and she did not get that mandate. So what happens next? We have put forward, together with Plaid Cymru, uh, a white paper that uh, suggests a, a way forward as far as Brexit is uh, concerned. I have today written to the Prime Minister reminding her that it, it takes more than words when it comes to seeking engagement with the devolved governments. I welcome the words of Gitto for example, where he, re he recognises the, uh, the, the, the reality of the, of the situation, that a sustainable Brexit can only happen uh, if the devolved governments are fully part of that process. Uh, and I hope that the small group in Whitehall that have been trying to control this take note. I read, of course, the government's uh, white paper on Brexit, which effectively isn't in favour of border controls at all in any meaningful sense. Um, and uh, my interest in this is the Im on the impact of unskilled and semi-skilled labour <coughs> being imported in uncontrollable numbers and the effect that that has upon working class wages. Now, the Bank of England has uh, published a, a substantial report uh, on the impact of immigration on occupational wages, the evidence from, from Britain, the conclusion of which was that the 10% the, 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 uh, rise in the proportion of immigrants is associated with a 2% reduction in pay in the semi and unskilled services sector. And, and I struggle to understand why the, the, the Labour Party of all parties is prepared to countenance a situation where working class wages are driven down so that for many people the minimum wage is the maximum wage. The greatest threat to, uh, to people's wages is continued austerity. <laughs> that, is, that is the greatest threat. Uh, I, I wonder if he would make it clear what his position was on the minimum wage, for example, whether he supported its introduction uh, by a uh, Labour government or whether he supports uh, the need for uh, greater focus on policing the, uh, the minimum wage and whether he would see an increase in the minimum wage to the level of, of a living wage. Uh, those are the, the ways to protect people. Yes, it is important to protect people from not just their own people, but people from other countries from exploitation. Uh, and that needs uh, more resources to, to be put into the policing of that. But there's no doubt that the greatest threat to wages is a Tory government that is bent on austerity. I, I notice that the First Minister neatly sidesteps the, the question. UKIP did actually support the introduction of the minimum wage, and certainly, we, 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 certainly we, we support policing it effectively because the law of the land should be obeyed. Uh, and it's no answer to the problem of wage compression to say that we will take strong action against employers who are breaking the law. What is of more concern is that the average wage rate at the bottom of the income scale is being driven down for more and more people. And there are hundreds of thousands of people who are on the bread line who are forced into even more precarious situations as a result of uncontrolled immigration. Surely, firm control of unskilled and semi-skilled migration from the European Union which can be controlled from the rest of the world under existing law, is a vital necessity for ordinary working class people. Well, first of all, again, you misses the point about border control. If you want to have border control, you have a hard border between Northern Ireland and the Republic. There is no other way of doing it, uh, unless you, you want to put British border agency officials in the Republic's airports and ports, and that is a, a strategy fraught with uh, problems, if I can put it diplomatically. Uh, that situation is still not being properly resolved. But for me, the issue of low wages is driven by the austerity we've seen for the past seven years, the fact we haven't seen increases, it, it, real increases in pay, the fact that we've seen people who are in work lose in work benefits. Yeah. 
we, we used to say, and the Secretary of State got himself into trouble uh, uh, on this, we used to say to people, if you get a job, your income will increase. That is no longer the case because of the fact that those at the top of the income scale have received more money through tax cuts and those at the bottom have received less money through the reduction and loss of in-work benefits. That's what the, the focus should be on, making sure that those people who are working hard, working long hours, get the support they deserve and they haven't had it over the last seven years. Yeah.